Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Heather and here at Heather's Book Review, this is a book YouTube channel, but I am currently 12 days postpartum and I did wanna create some videos about my pregnancy conceiving and labor journey. Um, so I, I'm creating a playlist here. If you look in the description below, there are links to all of the videos that are currently in this currently and or will be in this series. Um, but this video today focuses on my pregnancy journey, my two week wait journey, finding out that I was pregnant, all of the symptoms that go along with that. In this video, I will be including so many pictures for you, um, including all of like the pregnancy tests that I took, including first response, early response, my pregnate tests, and all that good stuff. So I encourage you to look in the description below um, to see all the other videos in this series. Um, this is the second video in the series that I'm filming, but I will put in the description below um, the future videos that are to come too. And once I film and edit them, uh, I will link them there for you as well. So if you like to read, um, I do read and review thrillers and mysteries here on my channel. Um, I like to film my top 10 of whatever year it is books because my, my goal is pretty much to be on the hunt for the best books, um, in my opinion, especially the best thrillers. So if that interests you, I would love if you could hit that subscribe button. Or if you like the pregnancy and labor videos, um, please check those out as well. But let's just go ahead and get started with the uh, pregnancy chat. Also, one more thing. If you want to connect with me, I am on Instagram. It's just Heather's Book Review on Instagram. Same for Goodreads as well. So during my conceiving journey um, and my pregnancy journey, I felt like there was, I, I was looking for like specific content on YouTube and I really struggled finding certain videos um, and just certain people that were, I struggled with finding people that were going through like similar experiences that I was, like I was, um, specifically like implantation bleeding. That was a huge one. I felt like there was like little to no videos of like, what is implantation bleeding? Am I experiencing that? Or is it the start of my period? Like I did experience it in my pregnancy, which I will um, talk about in this video. But anyways, my goal of filming these pregnancy conceiving labor, that whole jazz, <laughs> that whole mess of videos is that if this can even help one person out there, I would be so, so happy because there were so many times where I was looking for something. I was looking for help. I was looking for answers or someone with similar experiences to me. And like, I just really struggled finding that. So I'm hoping that this helps someone out there, but let's just go ahead and get started. So something you guys should know about me is I am extremely impulsive. I, the two week wait or the TWW that some people call it was brutal for me. Um, if you're unfamiliar with like taking pregnancy tests, you're, you're not supposed to take them, especially like the first response, early response ones, um, like until you're three to four days before your period. Now me, I just, I couldn't do it you guys. And that's just me personally. It's like, I needed to know I was testing like seven days before my period, six days before my period. And I was spending so much money on the uh, first response, early response pregnancy test because they're like 20 bucks a box and you only get three. So I did find um, Pregmate strips, which I will link uh, or I'll put a still picture um, here for you and I'll link in the description. It's not sponsored. I, this is just a product that I used. Um, and I talk about this all in my conceiving video as well, which I'll, I will link up here for you and also in the description, but these came with 50 pregnancy test strips, which really helped my impulsive personality when I was feeling like I was getting close to my period, but I wasn't close enough to waste a first response, early response test. I would use one of these tests, um, if you will. And I loved them. It saved me a lot of money because I was spending so much money on like the actual pregnancy tests. So let's just go ahead and get into the two week wait period. So like I said, I have a whole conceiving journey video that I already filmed where I talked about like what I did to conceive, but I do want to talk about my two week wait experience for you guys. I did track my symptoms using the app P tracker again, not sponsored. This is just the app that I've used. I actually have tracked my periods on this app for years. Um, and I love it because you can just click on the date and then you can type in any symptoms that you're experiencing. And it also tells you, um, like you can switch your ovulation date and stuff on there. Like it, it gives you a prediction, but you can also edit it 
to put like when you actually ovulated, if you're using like ovulation strips and stuff like that. So I started logging my symptoms as soon as I got them, which was six DPO. DPO just stands for days post ovulation. Sorry, I had to adjust my camera a little bit. So if it's wobbly for you, I apologize. But I, I'm gonna put a still here if you wanted to pause the video or take a screenshot or something. Um, but I, I'm gonna walk through all of these symptoms with you. I will be looking to my left here because the same thing you guys are looking at, I'm looking at right now on my computer. So it looks like I started noticing symptoms at 6 DPO. Um, I experienced some cramping and some very light cervical mucus um, that day. This was the strangest thing. My belly and my inner thighs were so itchy that day. I had never experienced something like this in my life. It was really weird. It was like they would simultaneously just simultaneously just start itching. And I was like, could this be a pregnancy thing? I don't know. I'm going to write it down anyway. So I'm just telling you guys it was really weird, but <laughs> that's what I experienced. Um, then I guess I didn't feel anything from 7 DPO to 8 DPO, probably just felt normal. At 9 DPO is when I started implantation bleeding. And I want to give a decent amount of time talking about implantation bleeding, um, which I'm going to get to, but just know that I started experiencing that on 9 DPO. Um, by the way, these days plus these DPO dates are for sure accurate because I did um, track my ovulation with the pregnant ovulation combo strips that I was just talking about here. Um, so just keep that in mind. Looks like I had a massive headache on 9 DPO. Um, and I did get my very first squinter this day. Um, I'll talk about that in a second, but that's just a picture where you really have to squint your eyes and you can mo you can see the pregnancy test. I could, I could, but I'll get into that. 10 DPO, I still, um, oh, that's weird. It says my implantation bleeding started. I think I meant continued because it did start on 9 DPO. I had slight cramping. I was really emotional that day, um, but it was a good emotional because I was like, that was when I found out. I think that's when I found out. No, I found out I was pregnant on 11 DPO, but it's like, I knew, I knew in my heart that I was pregnant and I was so emotional, but in a good way. And then on 11 DPO is when I got my big fat positive um, on a digital and a, where you just look at the two lines, um, both of them, first response, early response brand. Again, not sponsored, just what I used. Um, let's see, morning was a faint line. Yes. So I'm, I'm going to show you guys all these pictures. Let's just get into the pictures because that's the fun part. Um, the two apps that I used to track all of those DPO symptoms was P Tracker. And then I also used the app Baby Center to talk with all of, um, these other women during the two week wait. And I was like posting my pictures on there. Like, can you guys see this? Am I crazy? Is this a faint line kind of thing? And I loved both of those apps. Um, okay. So here we go. I'm going to put my picture of my squinter here. So this was the, this is when I took, I took a first response, early response test way, way, way early. What date was that? Let me look back. Um, 9 DPO. Okay. So I don't know if you guys can see it. Let me know if you can. I could. Um, but let me just take a pause here and just say, if you are going to use first response, or if you are going to go to the store and buy actual pregnancy tests, do not get the wall, do not get a cheap brand. Okay. Get these pregnate strips or get first response, early response, or like the, um, what is it? The clear day or like the blue dye one. Um, because I did use a Walgreens brand. Um, this was like three years ago. There was one day where I felt really, really, really off. And I came home, I took a nap, which uh, is very unlike me. I came home after work and I took a nap. I wasn't feeling good. I was like, maybe I'm pregnant. But at the time I was on birth control, but I was experiencing something called breakthrough bleeding, which is when you're bleeding on birth control, like well before your period is supposed to come, like before you're on sugar pills, which can be an indicator of pregnancy. So um, I went to Walgreens and I bought the Walgreens brand and I came home and it was like a faint positive. And I was like, oh my gosh, like I'm on the pill. This is weird. This is crazy. How did it happen? So 
I used the two other ones um, and you could see the faint line. I used them all in the same night, but it was decreasing, which was really odd. Like it was like definitely like a faint positive. Then it got fainter, then it got fainter. I don't have the pictures anymore. I wish I did for the sake of this video. Um, but then I went to my OBGYN and I told her exactly what I just told you guys. And she was like, this is something called um, a chemical miscarriage or a chemical pregnancy. It's one of the two, um, which is basically like where you do get pregnant, but then like something happens and um, things just don't work out. So I was like really devastated at the time. I mean, obviously my husband and I were not trying then, but just like the, like seeing that positive pregnancy test and then not being pregnant like was really hard for me to deal with um, for a, a long time. And yeah, so my point is just spend the, spend the money because the reason I'm saying that is I was on Baby Center and I posted those pictures and one girl was like, hey, just an FYI, like this doesn't look like um, first response, early response. It looks like a cheapo like Walgreens or CVS brand. Like just so you know, these are, um, what did she say? They're like known for um, giving you like false positives. That's what it's called, a fal false positive. And I was like, oh shit, okay. So I have always just spent the money on first response, early response. Did I have a chemical miscarriage? Maybe, that's what my OBGYN seems to think. Um, but yeah, all I know is I'm filming this video 12 days postpartum with my beautiful baby boy sitting right, sleeping right in front of me in his playpen and things work out, right? Um, but I just wanted to put that little piece in there. Like, you know what, pay the extra five or six bucks because getting a faint positive and getting your hopes up, you know, it just, it really sucked. So anyways, or, <clears throat> sorry, I know that was long winded. Um, sorry, I'm clicking through my notes. Okay. Let me get a drink of water and then we'll get back into it. Okay. I need to talk about implantation bleeding, um, and cramping because that is that out of everything was the one thing that I could not find here on YouTube was other people like talking about their experience with implantation bleeding um, and cramping. So I did just want to stop really quick and, and talk about this because it's important to me and hopefully it can help someone. It can help one of you guys. So if you, if we look back at that still picture of my symptoms. It looks like I started experiencing implantation bleeding on 9DPO. Um, so 9DPO, 10DPO, found out I was pregnant on 11DPO. Continued to have implantation bleeding 12DPO, 13DPO, 14DPO, and then I, and then 15DPO would have been my period, but obviously I knew I was very pregnant at this time. So my implantation bleeding experience was I had very minimal cramping, but every time I wiped, every time, not just a little bit, every time I wiped, there was a little like brownish kind of pinkish discharge. It was not heavy. Um, it didn't require a panty liner, but it was there every single time I wiped. It was not dark brown. It was a very light brown with like a little bit of a pinkish, um, pinkish hue. What at never at any time was it red. And this is where like, I feel like a lot of people on like the baby center apps that I've mentioned, baby center app I've mentioned and other forums, like they're often confused. Like, am I having implantation bleeding or is this the start of my period? From, I'm not a doctor, not a nurse, but from the, hi, but from the research that I personally have done on my own, it should, your implantation bleeding shouldn't really be red. Um, from everything I read, it should be more of like a brownish kind of pink. And that's exactly what mine was. I was a little alarmed because like I said, it was present every single time I was wiping when I went to the bathroom. But then once I hit that 15 DPO, like when I should have been getting my period, if I wasn't pregnant, it just stopped. It just stopped. So, um, I had a little bit of a cramping, but what I did really have is what I'm calling implantation pinching. And so I found out I was pregnant on 11 DPO, right? I swear to God, you guys, I got this pinpointed pinch of, I swear, like where the baby was implanting in my um, uterus, uh, in my uterus, in my lining there. 
I could feel it. It was like a little teeny tiny pinch and it would last for like a couple of seconds and then it would happen again and again, typically when I was like laying down. And this happened for days on end. I was like, man, this baby is really getting himself into the lining there, but I could feel it. I could feel that pinching more than I experienced like any implantation cramping, if that makes sense. So that's my experience with implantation bleeding slash implantation cramping slash implantation pinching, whatever you want to call it. Um, so yeah, hopefully that helps someone because I was looking for videos everywhere and like could find nothing. So my goal is that this really helps someone. Okay, so still talking about this squinter picture here. I shared my pregnancy journey with one of my very, very best friends. Her name is Taylor. And I sent her this picture that I took around like 4 p.m. when I got home from work. It was not a first morning pee, which a lot of people recommend doing. Um, is when If you think you're pregnant, like waiting until the next day when your pee is, um, uh, you know, not super diluted. <sighs> Anyways. I texted Taylor and I was like, dude, do you see this? And she was like, it's just so funny. She was like, are there supposed to be two lines? Like what is going on? And we were just like having a laugh about it. Um, but later, later that night, okay, so I, I let the test sit. Now keep in mind, and I know this, do not come for me. I am well aware. These tests are, they're invalid after five minutes, okay? So you're not supposed to read into the test. Literally, people say throw it out after five minutes. Um, I didn't, I didn't. Being honest with you, don't come for me. It's what I did. I kept the test and I felt like the line did get darker um, a couple hours into the night. So later that night, around eight or nine, I used one of the pink strips from the Pregmate combo and I saw a line. I'm going to link it here. One of the pictures, I drew an arrow to the faint line that I could see. And then um, in the other picture, I um, put it right above or under. I'm trying to visualize a picture in my head of an ovulation strip because my goal was I wanted my eye to direct it to the two lines that were on the ovulation strip and it might help um, me see the line on the pregnant, if that makes sense. So the ovulation is blue, the pregnant is pink, or the pregnancy one is pink. So at this time, I'm texting that same friend Taylor again, and I'm like, girl, look at it. it's here, it's it's freaking here. I was at this point, I was like so excited. Still, she couldn't really see it. She was like, you could tell that she was like not trying to like get my hopes up, but she like still wanted to be excited for me. That's a OG friend right there. Um but yeah, so let's see. So I'm looking at my notes. So the next morning, now it's 11 DPO, confirmed 11 DPO because I know when I ovulated. Um, I took another first response, early response, which I will put here. And here, this is not what I call a squinter. This is what I would call a faint line. You can definitely see the faint line there. I texted Taylor again and I was like, hello, please tell me that you see this because it's darker than yesterday's. And she was like, I do see a little bit of something, but like, isn't it supposed to be darker? Now keep in mind, um, we're both first time moms. Like this was our first experience, like going through this stuff together. So we had basically no freaking idea what we were doing. Um, but in my heart, I knew, I knew, I knew, I knew that I was pregnant. And this was my last first response, early response test. And I was like, you know what? After work, I'm getting my ass to Walgreens and I'm gonna not only buy digital, but I'm gonna buy more of like the double strip tests that you see here. And that's exactly what you what I did, you guys. Around 4 p.m. on October 8th, 2020, I came home, I peed in the cup, I used a digital, I used a positive, put them in that cup, waited, and I got my faint po or I got my positives, which I will put here. I'm gonna put um, a still of the picture here, <clears throat> excuse me, of how I told my husband that we were pregnant. Um, my husband is a huge gamer, so I preemptively, I'm a teacher. I like to plan, plan ahead, make fun of me, do whatever you want. But I went on Etsy and I bought these adorable little gamer, little gaming council booties. Oh, my little baby sneezing. Bless you. I bought these little gaming, um, video counts or, oh my gosh, what's going on? These little like, whatever, video game booties. And then the onesie that says player three has entered the game. And 
I went into, my husband was uh, working from home at the time. I, this was during, you know, the COVID-19 um, pandemic. And he was working at home and I had wrapped the booties in the onesie. And I go and I give him the gift. He opens it and he looks at me and he's like, oh my God. He jumps out of the chair. He twirls me around. I'm crying. Tears of joy. He's like, oh my gosh, get out, get out, get out. I can't believe this. And it was amazing. I have... You know, the day I got married, one of the best days of my life. The day I found out I was pregnant, one of the best days of my life. Giving birth to my son, one of the best days of my life. <laughs> Getting our puppy Finn, can't forget about him, one of the best days of my life. I mean, you guys, this was such a special moment. I have, I don't know if you can hear him, he's slowly waking up. I have always wanted to be a mom. I'm a teacher. <laughs> I love teaching. I love my job. I don't even feel like I work because I love what I do. Sounds cliche, but it's 100% true. Um, but the one thing I've wanted always in my life was to be a mom. Um, I'm an only child. I don't have any siblings. And I've always just had this dream of having a little family of my own with my husband. And we have been able to start our little family now. Thank you to God. And I am just, I'm over the moon. I'm really blessed and so grateful. And I hope that this pregnancy journey here that I've shared with you has helped you guys. Um, maybe it's, maybe you were wondering what, you know, if you're experiencing any two week wait symptoms. Um, maybe you are experiencing implantation bleeding. Thank you so much for checking out this video, you guys. If uh, I encourage you to look in the description below to see the other conceiving, pregnancy, and labor postpartum videos that I am filming. Um, if you like books, I encourage you to check out my books here or my book reviews here. I can link my top 10 favorite books of 2020 video up here for you if you're interested, just so you can see how I, um, you know, review and rate books. Um, but yeah, I will see you guys in my next video and thank you so much for watching. Bye.